Draft mobilization continues across the country this week and thousands of men have already reported for duty at training centers and military offices throughout Russia. But civilian protests started first and in more than 50 cities protesters in group, large and small, took to the streets to voice their disapproval of the mobilization. In total, more than 2,400 people were detained by police during the demonstrations. Still, Kremlin officials and the Russian government say they are on track to fill quotas for recruits from every region of the country in a mobilization of the military's active and ready reservists that they insist is only partial. Discussing Putin's partial mobilization and the protests in Russian regions, we are now joined by Dmitry Bikov, prominent Russian writer, journalist uh, and a poet. Dmitry, hello. Nice to meet you, Kate. Fine to meet you, everybody. Yes, nice to see you here. And speaking in English with you is something different and new for us, but I, I hope that it's, it's going to be all right for both of us. So the first thing I wanted to ask you about is the level of this protest in Russia. How serious is this? Can it change anything, in your opinion? You know, the, uh, the only one, the only sign of serious protest is coming to the side of protesters from some representatives of the so-called Silovics, ministers of suppression, of some repressive ministers. If they understand that the protest is really serious, some of them begin to change their mind very quickly. This process, this process is avalanche-like. And like, like, for example, in Georgia, uh, like it happened at the Shvardnadze, or in Ukraine, like it happened in the last days of Yanukovych's power, uh, when the first representatives of the so-called Russian police will go to the side of protesters, to the side of Navalnists, for example, so we'll see that something serious is really happening. I think um, it will take two or three months. Two or three months, why so? Why is this two or three months period of time important? Well, you see, Kate, it's really very funny to read all those uh, predictions about long way to the crash of Putin's regime. We all know that in some situations, the process is really very quickly. Uh, goes really very quickly. It is quick because self-destruction of regime of all its institutions and all its representatives of all its influencers uh, really goes nonstop. You know, uh, for for example, for recent 10 years, they were destroying their regime in a slow manner, I should say in a soft manner, but the logic of regime is much more powerful than, for example, Putin's will for self-keeping. Uh, his instinct of self-keeping uh, is away now, because you know the logic of regime demands the outer war. They can't live without the hot war. That's the only foundation for the consolidation of society. Maybe they really had no exit. You know, Putin is always repeating that he had no exit, that he had... He hadn't left any other way, any way out. Maybe that's so, but he is wrong because he says he is surrounded by collective West. Uh, West is not guilty. That's the logic of time, the logic of his governing. His time is over. Uh, elderness, just getting old, uh, getting ill, getting insane because 23 years in such on such a throne, it makes you sometimes really crazy. You don't see the limits of your power and the limits of your electoral time. Uh, this all means that he's really surrounded by enemies, but uh, his main enemies are the new generation, the future, the time itself, uh, the death itself, and so on. So his war is just a desperate attempt uh, to avoid unavoidable. And maybe uh, that's the logic of his self-destruction. Uh, Sergei Medvedev, who is one of our uh, best historians, historians of modernity, I should say, wrote in his recent column that there were three fatal mistakes, and they were really very quick, uh, one quicker than another. The first one was war, then embargo on Russian oil, and the third, which was also unavoidable, the mobilization. After it, the events will go really quickly. Okay, when you talk about the mobilization, Dimitri, um, 
Well, maybe he is insane. We don't know that precisely, but still, uh, we can we can imagine that they in Kremlin they did have a plan. They understood beforehand that there would be some kind of protest in Russian regions, in Russian cities, so they might be ready for that. Do you think that the level of repressions will grow? I understand that it's really high already, but still, something more. Well, you ask as if their forces were endless, but they're limited, and very soon they'll understand it. You know, even now, they demand maybe million, actually a million of new uh, troopers, uh, uh, new ordinary soldiers, uh, just maybe to fight in Kherson, to fight under Kharkov, I'm not sure in which direction they will be used, but uh, however, they need millions of new troopers. Uh, I think that very soon uh, they'll uh, have the strong necessity to take most of policemen or the so-called Omon, as we decided, the Siloviki. special troops yeah. of Rhea, Russian police, yeah, uh, they'll have to take them to real military business, not only to beat uh, the protesters. Maybe very soon they'll understand that their force is really very limited. Uh, maybe um, the hole in their defense will be bigger and bigger. And maybe, I'm not sure, but I hope so, some of them, even now, uh, begin to understand that regime will use them without any conscience. Uh, there is no limits, for example, for Putin's crime. He really has no exit. He, he can do his situation only worse. And very soon, with every, with every step, it begins worse. So I think that um, maybe in three months, they'll understand that there will be no other way for them uh, except beginning protesting. Maybe, you know, the protests of those policemen would be the beginning of real Russian reconstruction or revolution or whatever you call it. You know, because, for example, I, I remember very well the second half of the 80s when uh, militia just refused to beat demonstrants and to um, appear on meetings because mm -hmm. there were more than millions of people on Moscow streets. I remember Manezhne Ploche, Manezhne Square at that time. It was really very conclusive for them, very conclusive and very evident. I think that uh, three months is quite enough to understand that Putin is lonesome. He has no support. Final thing I would like to ask you about, let's imagine this happens, what you predict, and Putin falls. Does this mean that democracy comes to Russia? Does this mean that me and you and others will go back home? Well, I'll be back anyhow, uh, because I promised to organize the New Year celebration in the studios of Echo of Moscow. I'm not sure that Venediktov will um, uh, take back the studio on November, but because Margarita Simonian and her studio Sputnik was there for nearly a year. And I think that uh, we need the priest just to uh, take away all the demons of her governing. But nevertheless, maybe Saint Water, maybe something more, um, maybe prayers. But nevertheless, we'll be back. You know, all those doubts about uh, Putin's um, system, which will stay after him, which will survive him, uh, that's an illusion. Maybe we'll get in Russia sometimes the new wave of resentment and new fascism comparing, for example, with German situation of the 30s. Maybe now we have 20s and we do. Uh, but nevertheless, the first time after Putin will be a site of freedom. That would be the wind of changes uh, because everybody is so tired of aggression, of cruelty, uh, of unfair, of the absence of court and anything. Uh, I'm sure that this tiresome society will like to make maybe a short interruption in wars and repression. Dimitri, we all miss it greatly. We all miss it greatly. Thank you so much, Dimitri. It was prominent Russian writer, journalist and poet Dimitri Bukov on Russia Tomorrow.